You know, one of the, one of the things that uh, being on the Appropriations Committee means is you can go to bat for Jane Chu. And we got her $2 million more million this year, all of us working together. On the we got the NEH more money, and we got the Kennedy Center money to finish a theater, and we're going to keep working, getting money into the arts, okay? That's I, I, I want to tell you a couple of stories about my life, because I uh, grew up surrounded by the arts. Uh, my parents loved the arts, so I was surrounded by music, by poetry, by performances, I, I remember uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary during the Vietnam years, Pete Seeger. Uh, all of these things were very much a part of my life. And um, I have to tell you one story about my father. Uh, he was here in the 1950s, seems like a century ago. But uh, he was here in the Congress, and there was a... a poet by the name of Robert Frost. Have you heard of him? <laughs> Robert Frost was the poet laureate. He was the Congress's poet. And he was a grumpy old guy. He was in his 80s. And the Washington Post asked him how he liked his job as poet laureate. And he said, this is a wonderful job. He said, I, I get to travel the country. I get to read my poetry. People applaud. And they said, well, how about the Congress part? And he says, I don't know anything about it. I've never met any of these guys. I don't think they know anything about poetry. And, and the next day, a headline was out there, very grumpy about Frost kind of trashing Congress. And so my father saw this as an opportunity. He, wrote, he called him up on the phone, wrote him a note, and said, why don't you come for dinner? And that began a lifelong friendship. My dad and Robert Frost, he was in our home. There are many pictures of my brothers and sisters, all of us around him. And one of the things that my father and Robert Frost used to talk about is how poetry and power fit together. And he used to, they used to say, poetry and power are a civilizing force. The poetry is a civilizing force on the power. And... Um, they used to talk about arts being a central part of civic life. And we heard last night, kids who create don't destroy, right? Well, they also talked about how arts challenge us. They challenge and show up sometimes our weaknesses, our imperfections. And by doing that, they make us better people. They make us better human beings. So. As Jill reminds me, um, when I announced for Congress, after all of that background, guess where I did it? In an art gallery in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And we, we announced in the Llewellyn Art Gallery, we invited down at the time the champion of the arts, Pat Williams from Montana. I'm too bad John Tester isn't here, but he'd know well, and, and Pat, served on the same appropriation subcommittee that I did and was an incredible champion for the arts. And I said, I'm going to be a champion from the arts, and I've been fighting ever since to do that. And the, the fruits of all that labor are what are before you today in the CREATE Act. This is an incredible piece of legislation that we have tried to infuse with the arts, with creativity, and I just want to tell you a little bit about it. You're going to learn far more. You're going to have papers that, that uh, um, tell you all about it. But th the point behind this, and this kind of builds on Senator Tester's theme, which I think is a theme that you should talk about to all your members of Congress, the arts are a part of our economy. In New Mexico, one in ten jobs are due to the arts. And... What this legislation, the CREATE Act, does is jumpstart the creative economy. It expands programs for artists like microloans, like business loans, economic assistance. You know, we have a Peace Corps today. This starts an artist corps. Doesn't that sound good? That's 
So this piece of legislation that you're going to be talking to your members of Congress and asking them to sign up, make sure that you tell them from your perspective why and how important the arts are to you and to your state and why they should sign up and get aboard. And after we finish this work, after we finish this work and we get it all done, and there's a big long list in this legislation, then we need a ministry for the arts that'll be over it all. So, And I have to tell you from my history and my experience that the, the best thing I did in my life is marry up to my wife, Jill, who's here with me today, no doubt about it. And she has been the real champion of the arts in our family. She started uh, way back years ago as the New Mexico cultural officer over all of the arts and the museums and the parks and monuments. And she's now on President Obama's committee for the arts and humanities with Megan, who I believe as it was mentioned and is also here, who, who's the chairman of the committee, is that correct? But, but one final piece of advice, when you go to these offices, be bold, be fearless, and be creative and sign them up. Thank you, thank you. <laughs>